TWM podcast. Been a mad week this week in wrestling. So, uh, you know, let's carry that on with, quite frankly, two quite uninspiring shows from the two companies that are meant to be at war. You know, it's not really, it's not, it's not the one really, is it? Uh, welcome to Wednesday Night War Podcast Network. Um, to the army of network of stuff and things in general, uh, stuff being written, stuff, uh, news reviews, uh, some interviews, uh, some editorials, all of that good stuff. You can find that at twm.news. Um, that's our website where you can also find the things, which are our podcasts, our podcasts, or wherever you can find good podcasts. You can go to twm.news and find them there. You go to Puppy on your Spotify or your um, iTunes or your YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, yeah, um, that's who we are. That's who we are, and this is what we do. We sit here and we discuss wrestling. Um, we are also got some housekeeping to do, some uh, sponsors. Um, one up. Uh, we are brought to you by We Love Sport UK. We Love Sport UK are a wonderful app which uh, lets you know exactly where to watch the latest WWE pay per views now, pub. So, like, sooner than you. We should be what like they'll be up and running sooner than we should be. Well, you know what? Let me not do that. Um, they're great. Uh, they have them. They're incredible on social media at We Love Sport UK um, everywhere. And uh, you know the, their website is We Love Sport Some of our articles are up there. I believe both my contributors' articles are up there. My contributors today are George, hello, and Victoria. Hello. And both for quite a while, they're um, way more knowledgeable than me when it comes to wrestling. Do we have another sponsor, George? We do. Uh, it is the wonderful people over at WrestleCrate. It's WrestleCrate.co.uk. Use the code TWM Wrestling to get yourself uh, some free item, wait, a free item in your first box. If you continue your subscription for an additional two months, you get two more free things. It's very fun. You get autograph pictures, you get pins, you get T-shirts. It's all wonderful stuff. WrestleCrate.co.uk and use the code TWM Wrestling for your discount. Wonderful, George. Thank you very much because I can never remember what the ins and outs. And so I, I know you're you're a big advocate for WrestleCrate. Like, let's hit a um, happy medium, shall we? So um, NXT was just about everything coming to a head. Everything coming to a head. Basically, people um, should not writing checks that, that their body can't cash. Uh, yeah, let's start off right at the beginning of NXT. Right at the beginning of NXT, it was um, the title match, which I was shocked by. I thought it'd be the main event. Um, it kind of telegraphed what the main event might be, but uh, very surprising. Out, out come out the newly bros, um, and out come out um, Imperium. Uh, what did you guys make of the, the match before the ending? Uh, we'll start. With I was you. really enjoying it. Yeah, I think it's really good. Yeah, like four amazing competitors. Yeah, yeah, incredible match. Like, um, I've I've gone on record about how much I love Marcel Bartel. You know, yeah. Four. Um, obviously Timothy Thatcher and Matt Riddle. We've seen um quite close. You know, <laughs> we've seen quite close. Um, Marcel Bartel as well. I was surprised they pulled the trigger on Timothy Thatcher turning heel much quicker than we anticipated. All right, fine. Let's get into brass tacks then. <laughs> the yeah, end, yeah. Let's get the into end. the juicy stuff, Joe. Let's get into the juicy <laughs> stuff. Um, you know, uh, uh, Riddle yeets one of Imperium into Timothy Thatcher. Timothy Thatcher gets offended um, and just decides to walk up the ramp. Uh, he didn't do everything I wanted him to do, but it was pretty much exactly how I expected the match to go. Um, Matt Riddle decides that he's going to go it alone. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have Dexter Loomis in this corner, so he loses. New tag champs, Imperium. They are ruling the roof. Yes. And no, and this we, no, this has been coming. If you think about the result of World Collide, where the Undisputed yeah. Era blew a 4-3 lead, uh, <laughs> this has been coming. What, what I want now is for Alexander Wolf to go and get a title so then they control everything. Go and get the North American title from Keith Lee. We'll, 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 we'll get to that. We, we, we will <laughs> get to that. Um, right, after, after the match, Timothy Thatcher says he didn't want any bullshit. He just wanted to wrestle and Matt Riddle kept putting him, um, pulling him into bullshit. Um, I'd just like to make a random sidebar that I meant to say. It was absolutely genius having Byron Saxton um, as the third color commentator for this week because he is implicit in the story of this, in the story of this yeah. episode. 
He was implicit. He was acting yeah. so shocked, but he is actually just as responsible. <laughs> but, you know, uh, we, like... Because of his game show abilities when he was doing the um, Lee Bros. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hosting abilities. Yes. Yeah. I um I, I I liked I liked the Timothy Thatcher. He was purely just annoyed because of Matt Riddle as a person. He was like, all I want to do is tap people. Uh, all I want to do is snap or tap people, and all all Matt has to do is snap people. Yeah. But he wanted to have fun. He wanted to be an idiot. Yeah. It's a great way of turning him heel. Just, just getting sick of Matt Riddle's stupid games. Like he wasn't even the heel at that point. He was a tweener, and then they got they even got into it backstage, and then Matt Riddle called um, William Regal for the main event. Regal accepted, and then Thatcher, I say Thatcher turned heel when he just started hitting him with stuff. When he lost. <laughs> well, no, like no, um, no. I mean, backstage after the after the iPad. Oh yeah. Board. Yes. Yes. Do not. <laughs> Right, so obviously we get to the main event and it is mostly Timo, isn't it, um, Vic? What did you think of the match? So I didn't get that last but um, What did you think of the match? The main event? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah really enjoyed it. I liked the whole... I liked everything that they'd done there. Wasn't surprised with anything. Uh, they're both really great wrestlers um, and they complemented each other really well. So yeah, I really liked it. That's good. Like, I'm, 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 that's good and... Um, were you surprised by the finish, uh, George? Um, n- yes and no. I like I'd say yes because I thought Thatcher would get a win because he just you know broke the team up and yeah, he was he was going to beat Riddle and that was it done. That was going to be the one match and then that's it. We're going to see it again. But no, I wasn't surprised that the way Matt won that he rolled him up and didn't yeah. get a decisive win. Yeah, yeah. To keep like, Thatcher looking very strong. Keep Thatcher looking strong, and afterwards, Thatcher took massive exception to it and b- tried to break his arm. And um, NXT ends on Timothy Thatcher looking straight down the camera like an absolute psycho. Like you see, you see, you see that George. You see that? That's yeah. a real psycho. On your deck, that's a real psycho. Nah, De- <laughs> who, who would you rather run into in a dark alley, De- Dexter Loomis or oh, Timothy Thatcher? Dexter Loomis. I don't know. Dexter Loomis would probably follow you home. Yeah, but like, <laughs> so I'd, be happy uh, to me home. I'd invite him in for a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, and that's enough about uh, how George spends his Saturday nights. So let's move on um, to the NXT yeah, sponsored by Rafa Benitez. That's right. Um, I was fr- when I, I saw the matches the way they were set up. I was really frustrated. I was like, "Have you learned nothing from? Uh, oof, have you learned?" Absolutely anything from, you know, best of the Super Juniors, the G1 Climax, even the actual World Cup. You do both groups, at, you do the conclusion of both groups at the same time. But the story that they laid out for the, for this was actually very clever, wasn't it, Victoria? Fine. Um, yeah. Wasn't too happy with the result of one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, you're going to give away half of the ending of one group and half of the ending, half of, the ending of the other. But I guess it does ratchet up the stakes, I suppose. Um, yeah, we'll start off with um, Jake Atlas, right? That's that's his name. That's his name. That's his game. Um, Jake Atlas, Jake Atlas uh, beating Cody Neese, who goes 0-3. You absolute jobber. Um, and, um, and he's a former Cruiserweight champion. Yeah, no, well, like, still an absolute jobber in this context. Um, yeah, I'm super happy that they named Jake Atlas as... Uh, finisher finally and they named it something I suggested in a group chat so especially chuffed about that Rainbow DDT he, for the win Atlas might go through maybe possibly let's, let's see let's see next I, um, I, I put this out on Twitter this morning that his theme song though sounds like someone just messing around with the DJ setting on the keyboard in music class in year 10 yeah but like you can say that about a lot of theme songs, really. Oh, yeah, fair point. <laughs> like, um, I don't know if Steve was still doing themes for NXT, right. but, yeah, I, I, I know they're not doing them for main, but, like, yeah, theme quality is uh, dropped. <laughs> um, Agreed. Yeah. Uh, speak, anyway, yeah, so Jake Atlas, Rainbow DDT, beats the jobber. Um, Isaiah Swerve Scott laughs at the jobber. Isaiah Square Scott walks out for his match, feeling confident, gets beaten down by the jobber. Beautiful storyline. And because of that, um, can't even hit his finisher properly. Only hits hits his finisher and only gets a two. So from there, the writing was on the wall. Um, Jack Gallagher beats Isaiah Square Scott. Victoria, is this match you weren't happy about? 
Yeah, because I love Isaiah. Um, I really enjoy him. I really enjoy watching him. I have for a long time before he was in the WWE. Um, so yeah, I wasn't Ooh. happy with it at all. <laughs> yeah. Again, I can see why it was done, and so yeah. Yeah, it, it's, well, uh, as, it, as it stands. Sorry to interrupt you, Joe. Hmm. As it stands. Actually, I don't understand what they've done this. Like, what Victoria is saying about the record, I really don't understand it. Because Tazawa takes on El Hijo next week. Yeah. And Tazawa's 2-0 and and Fantasma's 1-1. One and one. So if yeah. Fantasma loses... We don't, know, we don't know how many people are going to go through from each bracket. So it might be like the World Cup where the top two go through to semi-finals and finals. Or it might be best of the Super Juniors where the top goes through and it's just on head-to-head. Top one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we 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 just don't know. We just don't know. Unless we do know, we we all haven't done our research. Uh, um, <laughs> in, 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 evil, evil way. That's what it. That's what it is. Um, should we talk about? Uh, the, no, no, it's it says it says the rest of the best record in each group will compete to determine the interim champion. So it's the the, the best in each group. Best in each group. So there you are. There you are, George. Once again, doing his due diligence. It's why we keep him around, ladies and gentlemen. Doing my that, exactly. Wikipedia is my favourite thing. Uh, exactly. Um, yeah. So, 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 cite, cite your sources, everybody. Cite <laughs> your sources. Um, shall we talk about the women's match, which I found hilarious? We shall. Which one? Hold on, there's two. Ken Carter's one or Tegan Knox's one? Um, let's talk about both of them, but we'll start off with, um, we'll start off chronologically. We'll talk about Tegan Knox's, which was just there, wasn't it? <laughs> just like... It, Indi- it, it was to put Tegan Knox back over. Yeah, exactly. Um, Indy Hartwell came out with less rainbow than she, she was wearing on Raw. And um, what, what was her catchphrase? Um, it began with an I. She's an Australian, she was an Australian woman with a catchphrase that begins with an I. So like... Oh, iconic. Yeah, sorry. Um, but you know, in the Indy Hartwell, in Indy Hartwell gets an offence and Tegan Knox overturns it, eventually wins. Um, that's juxtaposed with a promo package from Dakota Kai and um, Rena Gonzalez. Is that her name? Yes. Um, just uh, yeah, yeah. Just you know, doing the most, doing the absolute most. Um, yeah, she's the only woman I trust. I'm gonna ride in her sidecar. All of that stuff. Um, and now we get to the women's match, which I found absolutely hilarious. Um, Victoria, why did I find this women's match absolutely hilarious? Um, is, are we going to talk about Leah? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want her to do so well, and I have. I've been pulling for her for so long, but it's. Oh, yeah. Nothing's going anywhere with her. I mean. She's a great fit for the for the Robert Stone brand. That she is a really good fit for it. But um, I love that they had her take the L. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> he came out to watch. She lost yeah. the match because she spent too much. Yeah, exactly. She was like, "Hey, yeah. hey, hey! I want to be, I want to be in your gang, your gang, your gang. Watch this, <laughs> Long no. it's, it's it's like a footballer mm. playing for. Crystal Palace and she yeah. comes from Man United comes to watch and he says instead of playing football like a normal person he does kick-ups every five seconds roulettes he's trying to be as skillful as he possibly can but he loses you're, you're just like you're just like mate mate you're, you're, you're playing at right back and you haven't picked up your marker one you're incredible <laughs> Aaron Wambasaka what are you doing mate what are you doing oi what are you doing son's there He's on his hat trick. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was it was funny to see. It was, it was an entertaining. You, you you absolutely loved to see it, and just the fact that afterwards she reached out to him. She he just took her took her hand off of his arm in disgust and walked off. <laughs> it's just like that gift is how I feel about Leah. <laughs> yeah. I if somebody ha- yeah, if someone has that clip. That's how I feel about Leah as a wrestler. I'm sure she's a lovely person. But I think I'm happy about the result because I really like Kaden Carter, so I'm glad she got. Yeah, that. yeah, she's got she's got upside. I really want um, her her and Casey to become a formalized tag team. I think that the tag team um, the tag team division is a bit yeah, you know, considering that the belts are meant to tour brands, it's a bit shallow as some. They tour brands once. Mm-hmm. Once. Um. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we kind of skipped over something huge. Um, Cameron Grimes, baby. Cameron Grimes. Big Grimesy. Big Grimesy. It's Grime Grime time, as it were, because um, Cameron Grimes beats in Bella, which is a huge deal. Um, he didn't do it without help uh, because Damian Priest finally claimed 
uh, responsibility for attacking St. Bella several weeks ago. Um, how how deflating. Yeah, you know? I mean, I think the way that they did the reveal was really cool. It was just like, yeah. they made, he, he didn't have a mic, he just kind of like croaked some things. And then like, just in case there was any doubt as to who did it, <laughs> he, he did that arrow to one and his name came up on the Titan Tron. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> He's, he's, literally, he's literally signed. He's literally signed off on the attack. Um, I do like. What do you guys think of the match, Victoria? Uh, this was one of my. This was one of my favorite matches of the night. I love Cameron Grimes. I really like him. Mm. Um, I just want to. We've seen he's someone that we kind of forget is there, um, and then he'll come out and compete in these great matches. We saw him in a really good match with Keith Lee, like yeah. the last. NXT show with a crowd or one yeah. last one yeah um, and that was great and then we had this performance last night which was also really good so sometimes I do forget that he's there because he's <laughs> really involved in huge storylines or anything major but then when he is given that time to compete he does he has great matches um, and it was a big win for him last night and George um, this is not the first time Damian Priest has helped Cameron Grimes so why don't they just cut out the middleman and put them together They'd actually make a really good tag team. Yes, they would. I don't know why. I feel like they just complement each other very well. Yeah, they do. And like, like I said, like it's like not even the. I think it's the third time that one or the other has interfered in each other's business to the other's benefit. It's either a really long slow build to a tag team, or like you know. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a weird wrinkle of continuity. I've noticed. It'll be interesting to see if it continues. Um, what's even more interesting is, uh, you know, the Gargano family dinners. Oh my god, these are, these segments are getting my becoming my favourite thing from TV. <laughs> like, um, can they only go after couples? Like, <laughs> I, I just, I just love it. I just, I think it's the greatest. Yeah. segment that they've like this is the greatest thing Johnny Gargano has done in NXT and he's, he's the first NXT Grand Slam champion <laughs> <laughs> I think that sums up Johnny Gargano um, really, let's be honest he, 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 like him being so egotistical about himself that he's sat having dinner with his wife and he bangs out an iPad that's got highlights of his own match on it yeah yeah pretty incredible pretty incredible and his wife um, and his wife being fed up of being so, so, um, so selfless the two of them being so selfless that she accepts it you'd love to see it you absolutely love to see it um, the, the, and, the other best bit of this was where they were talking about Casey Catanzaro and they keep calling her a ninja and she's like no it's not, she's not a ninja but she's a warrior no, no she's not a warrior she's American she's American <laughs> <laughs> I guess she's American <laughs> that's, that's pretty good but um, long story short the two of them are coming for Mia Yim and Keith Lee. That's right, Johnny Gargano is going to wrestle Mia Yim and Candice LeRae is coming for the North American title. If only now. I can fully imagine if only now. Keith Lee losing. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Candice LeRae. <laughs> By God, it's the spirit bomb. But Candice LeRae, she has to fight. Sorry. Um, Marrow impression. No, it yeah. uh, that make it an interesting... It's like, and that's another interesting thing as well that they've done on NXT TV is they've actually referenced Mia and Keith as a couple. They've only ever done that like on backstage stuff where yeah. they've asked Mia about Keith. Mm -hmm. She's obviously spoken about him. This first time on actual NXT TV, they've outed them out as a couple. Yep, and um, yeah, honestly, that mixed tag is going to be fire. Fire, fire, fire. TWM podcasts are brought to you by We Love Sport. The fantastic app finding you your nearest sports bar showing the latest WWE pay-per-views. We Love Sport has over 400 of the best sports bars and pubs in the UK at your fingertips and allows you to book front row seats giving you the best views of the action. You can also check out what sports have been shown over the next seven days making sure you don't miss a second of the action. Download the We Love Sport app or the App Store or Google Play Store. Follow We Love Sport on all social media platforms at We Love Sport UK and check out We Love Sport dot co. Who owes you a tenner, George? Uh, well, I got a tenner from my mum because I started to charge my stepdad to use my Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! <laughs> right, I wasn't. He's, I wasn't right. Okay, he's he's on furlough, so he's right. sat at home doing nothing at the moment. Right, and he he he's, he paid me thirty quid for three months of Now TV, and he's given me a fiver towards using Disney Plus and Netflix. Yeah, fair enough. 
Fair enough. You can't argue with that. You can really argue with that. Um, but um, the reason why I decided to ask that question on public is because we are starting talking about AEW with um, somebody who owes somebody else something. That is right. Um, but but uh, of course, there is no chance in hell of John Moxley getting back his title from Brady Lee before Brady Lee is ready to give it back to him. Um, we started. Um, we started this entire saga with uh, Brady Lee. We started this entire saga with, uh, sorry, Brady Lee. Uh, John Moxley arriving to the arena, pissed. So it must be Wednesday. It, it, I mean, it must be Wednesday. It must be every single day. Cause it must be. He just seems like he's always going to be pissed. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Like the other day, Renee Poor said, Renee. Yeah, I was like, Victoria, the other day, Renee said that she wanted to do TikTok dances with her partner. And partner, um, how do you think he took that? I heard about this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've Who seen a couple funny? of their, like, um, there was another video that they made, and yeah, for, I heard about that. Someone responded and just said, "Ask him really nicely," and I was like, "That would never work on Moxley. Come on." <laughs> I mean, you'd be surprised, you know. Like the guy's pretty chaotic. Anyway, um, so you know, we'll fast forward to the main event here. The main event here is, um, you know, it's it's Lee versus Daniels. It is um, you know the exalted one versus the fallen angel. It's beautiful in its symmetry. Um, <laughs> And Brady Lee insists on being announced as champion, but to be the woman, you've got to be... Oh, wait, sorry, wrong show. Right, guys? Yes, wrong show. <laughs> um, Victoria, what did you make of this show, match? Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I liked it. Uh, it's probably not something I'm going to remember, uh, but I liked it. And everything Brody was doing was very Brody Lee. Like, it was exactly like where they're going with his character. Um I like him a lot, but I'm not enjoying much from him at the moment. I want to, but I'm mm. not enjoying anything as mm. much as I was hoping to. Yeah, you know, like, we, we know, this is the thing, we know what he can do, and he definitely seems like he's yeah. wrestling within himself, right, George? Oh, well, yeah, I completely agree. He's, he, he's not doing the most enthralling things at the moment. Victoria, you say it's not mo- you're not going to remember it. I will remember this match for one thing, and that is the, look, the fact that... <laughs> Uh, Brody Lee got hit by the angel's wings, kicks out at one and starts laughing. He then gets <laughs> yeah. hit. He then gets hit by the BME, kicks out at two and looks like he's exhausted. Surely, the, <laughs> surely the angel's wings is worse. Yeah, like you know what you guys say that you were, you, and we all we can talk about Brody Lee wrestling within himself. I might not have much one, but that big boot is still ridiculous. It's the best of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, getting towards the uh, tail end of the match, you know, I think it was just after this that they hit the um, Angel's wings. Um, the Dark Order comes to interfere. Um, uh, SEU and Cole Cabana, who Brody Lee has been taunting the entire match, jump um, jump the rail to come go and help them because you know. Uh, AEW's idea of getting around the whole audience thing is to have their rep, their um, fully okay wrestlers around ringside, which is actually paid dividends. I think. I think it's probably a bit. Um, it's an interesting stylistic choice. We can, we can compare and contrast it later. Um, anyway, uh, and you know, even, even though the interference has stopped, uh, Daniels takes the L anyway after a discus lariat. Or, um, he has one of the best lariats in the business. I will say that about Brody Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, you know, that's quite, it's, it's, it's quite sharp. Like, honestly, he's incredible, right? Um, it's just really, really crisp. And we know that he's working within himself because um, he's got this big pay-per-view coming. Um, obviously, at Double or Nothing, it is Moxley versus Brody Lee for Moxley's title that Brody Lee has. Um, so Brody Lee goes over, intimidates Dasher to announce him once again as the real champion. And then out comes John Moxley, as we said. He's pissed. <laughs> he angry. He angry. He angry. Um, Victoria, uh, would you yeah. have would you have had Moxley grab the belt back now? Would you have Would you have really carried the belt all the way to Double or Nothing? What What, what do you think? Um, I'm not sure. I, I know. I think what we're going to see here is we'll have one of the best performances from Brody Lee that we've had for a long time because him and Moxley work yeah. so well together and they've been working together for so long. Um, but when it comes to the, the title, I don't know. It, I think it could have worked either way. Probably keep it on Brody until yeah. the pay-per-view. Yeah, keep it with him. Don't do an angle where yeah, Mox keep gets it, it back. <laughs> I feel like Moxie's character fits perfectly to the point of he doesn't care about titles. Yeah. He's more just wanting to kick the piss out of him. 
Yeah, and he does mention it in the promo, which was my next question to George. What did you make of? What did I think of his promo? You yes. went really quiet then. Yeah, what did you think oh. of his promo? Every Moxie promo is beautiful. <laughs> he's got he's such a good talker and like he's got the he got he's got a good combination of body movement, of body language generally, and captivate captivism, if that's the word. When he when he talks. And everything he, he says is is brilliant because it fits in with his erratic behaviour. Yeah. And it it just flows really well. One hundred percent. Um and of course it's announced next week that we have Mox versus number ten next week. Um guys, who do you think number ten is? Because I feel like that's a reveal. I, I've actually go- I have actually Googled this. He his real name. Hold on, I'll find it. <laughs> All right. Um while we wait, uh, Victoria, anything you want to talk about? Um well I have no idea about this. So. <laughs> uh, number ten is Oh, he does actually have a Wikipedia page as well, but I can't think of his real name. Uh, Preston Vance. Preston Vance. That's his real name. Preston Vance. Wonderful. I was just thinking it was going to be a reveal to be someone, you know, like, my God. Like, you know how um, Luchadora was, yeah, there was a Luchadora character that was Becky Lynch in SmackDown, and then it turned out to be someone else. Um, and it was, oh, the Conquistador. Yeah, no, yeah. That was the final reveal. But when the Conquistador started interfering in Becky Lynch's matches, that was Dion Oderazzo or someone like that. Brilliant. Then, then they revealed it to be Mickey James when it came time. So I, I thought maybe they'd do something like that. Is it up, um, down the line? But uh, we're talking too much. Um, certain people need to go. Let's move on. Um, this next section is called Tarzan versus Clayton because essentially a double or nothing. That's what this match is. <laughs> More or less. More or less. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, but we start off this um, section of story, of, of meaty, meaty story, because that's how I split out my podcasts. Sorry, everyone. Uh, um, right, so, yeah. Best Friends versus Jurassic Express, which is definitely a choice, especially as they're putting it over as the winner's going to get a title shot at Double or Nothing. Which we know what um, Jungle Boy's going to be doing at Double or Nothing. <laughs> you telegraphed that I mean, so fast. <laughs> so much. Marco Stunt and Luchasaurus can team up while MJF yeah. deals with Jungle Boy. Mm, yeah, I mean, but it's, not, look, it's not a good idea because <laughs> I'm not a fan of Marco Stunt. But why are you a fan of Marco Stunt? Oh. I just don't really enjoy him. Like, out of the three members of Jurassic Express, he's obviously the clear weak one. Because I really like Jungle Boy. I think he's class. I don't know if everyone loves Luchasaurus. I love Marco Stunt. I absolutely adore Marco Stunt, actually. His selling is very good. <laughs> no, like, this is this is the thing. Like, I've I've seen a couple of his matches on YouTube and stuff. He, I think he's um, a real talent. I really, really do. Um, the thing is, right now, he's being cast in this role. Uh, and he's killing it in the role, right? But let's get to Yeah, he's, he's, he's like the modern version of um, Spike Dudley. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, um, his time will come because he's got an incred- he's got incredible upside. But uh, let's, let's get into it. It was definitely a choice, this match. Um, especially building it as what it is. It was, you know, a winner probably gets a title shot done with nothing. Um, uh, but, yeah. No, it's not, it's, it's not that. Sorry, I've just I've had a look at the AEW card. The winner doesn't get a title shot. I know, but like, no, but like they were talking like that, you know? You, you, oh, you, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's not. <laughs> George, it'll talk, like, they were like, oh, you know, this could have a big impact on the rankings because Evil Uno and, um, yeah, you know. Do. Yeah, whatever. You know, uh, Super Smash Bros. They're not here. <laughs> They're not. They can't be here because of COVID. So, like, you know, double or nothing's going to come before the end of COVID. So, when we'll probably get a t- Like, literally, that's like I'm talking about the subtext of the commentary. I'm not talking about what they literally said. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very brave that they had, same commentary. It's very brave they had Jim Ross on the show. <laughs> His health. His health. Yeah, that's true. The situation we're in. Yeah, it is true. It is true. Um, very, very brave. And they were sitting really close to... In fact, like, a lot of this show just gave me anxiety. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of wrestling in general these days gives me anxiety. CM Punk gives me anxiety for saying somebody should have spat in someone else's face in the middle of a pandemic. Um, considering what happened at the underground station, nah. Uh, no, I'm definitely not. Um... Yeah, this is a really good tech match because it's four really good performance, four performance that we all really like, unless George is going to about to say something mad like he doesn't like Chuck Taylor. 
Oh, I love Charlie Taylor. Yeah, well, uh, you know, he just needs a check. Um, His Twitter game is the best. Uh, especially, especially when he's drunk during um, Wrestle Kingdom. Oh, class. Uh, <laughs> but this match had a massively overbooked ending. Uh, Victoria, what was your favourite bit of interference? Uh, well, we were talking about Marco Stunt. Um, yeah. The guy just takes a beating, you know, because he's, he's so small. Everything just looks so brutal. Yeah. Um, and we have the next chapter of Marco Stunt just really gets the shit beaten out of him. Yeah. Um, so I enjoyed that. You enjoyed you enjoyed Wardlow and Marco Stunt. Uh, George, I apart, did, yeah. apart from Wardlow and Marco Stunt, what was your favourite bit of it? Uh, I'm going to have to level with you. I haven't seen the ending of this match. <laughs> I've had to work this morning and haven't been got around to watching the end of this match. But oh. I'm going to go Wardlow because Wardlow's a big boy. Wardlow, Wardlow, Wardlow attacking Marcus Stunt as well. My favourite um, yeah. interference was uh, Ray Phoenix just absolutely ending Orange Cassidy's life for no reason. <laughs> Somebody's already... <laughs> somebody's al- well, not for no reason. They're in the same ladder match. Double or nothing, right? But... Like, somebody's already um, dubbed it over to be, like, um, an ending from the Eric Andre show. You know, we'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Um, yeah, it's also the most animated we've seen Orange Cassidy. It's really crazy. Um, yeah, um, the other bit of interference, of course, was MJS jumping the rail and uh, deep giving, I think he gave Jungle Boy a DDT. I'm not sure. But um, it was definitely something which kept Jungle Boy from being able to... Uh, yeah. Kick out. Compete. Yeah. In two weeks. Yeah, kick out. No, not compete in two weeks. Kick out. Because um, oh, I, believe the, I believe the best friend's pinned Jungle Boy. Uh, l- later, MJF squ- squashes the dude. Apparently, the dude has a big, bright future in AEW, but, like, you know, just squashes. Squash matches for the win. Yeah, you know? Not nice and simple. And then he says a bunch of stuff about things, you know, MJF, just MJF things, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, he also says that he needs to shake up ring rust after his many life-threatening injuries. Um, yeah. So uh, he signed himself up for a match with Marco Stunt next week. He's such a dick. I, love <laughs> I actually think Marco might be him. <laughs> if Marco beat him, that would be so good. But I think they're going to have a competitive match. It's not going to be a squash. No, yeah, I think it'd be competitive yeah. and Marco will roll him up. Mm. I don't, I'm not sure about the result, but they'll definitely have a competitive match. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's nice and set up. Um, MJF is just doubling down on this character. And if he keeps winning, he's going to be number one ranked uh, number one ranked man in AEW. And we all know what that means, don't we? Nothing. Uh, Nothing. It's Ask Uka Rashida what it means to be ranked number one. Um, yeah, it's true. We'll we'll get to that in a bit. Um, well, actually, no, she's getting a shot now. <laughs> she is. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, this next bit is called Mud and Ruts because, you know, it rhymes with blood and guts and I don't even know what the heck this is. And then, um, let's start off with this. An established tag team lo- lost to two single stars. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> well, it is Matt Hardy and it is Kenny Omega. I don't care. An established yeah, tag team. I still uh, don't like that. Uh, an established tag team, and they do this all the time. Unless you're establishing yeah, yeah. those established single stars as a tag team, don't. I'm not involved in it. Not involved. Yeah. Not involved. Yeah, no, I do. Agree. I mean, like, they have an entire stable. <laughs> you know, like, if you want to protect those guys, just do it again. <laughs> and you know, it's fact. You know, I'm talking sense. Um, yeah. I've, I've, I will quickly interrupt. I've just seen Ray Phoenix's dropkick on Orange Cassidy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly took his head off. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, just like, you, you know, you know, it makes sense. Like, this match was, this yeah. match was good. I enjoy Santana Ortiz a lot as well. I think that's probably uh, why I'm a little bit more a little more upset than I should be about yeah. this result. Um, but, you know, they get their shine back later. Uh, and, and then, and then so. Um, later on, Jericho comes out and he pokes Pineapple Pete, which makes him an absolute monster. And I hate he him doesn't, forever. He doesn't really. He literally got pummeled and then hit the Judas effect. And that was it. Exactly. Pulped him. <laughs> <laughs> nah. If you hit the Judas effect. Pineapple, Pineapple, Pete. Pineapple, Pete. Pineapple Pete looks strong here. Yeah, but you know what? That's true. Shout out to Sugar Dunton, friend of the TWM um, network for a good one, for a good one. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget the time he came on 
onto our Wednesday podcast. You should check that out. It's now currently called um, the Wrestling World Report. Uh, back in the day, it used to be called the Indie Wrestling Roundup. I, I, I can't remember, man. <laughs> so many, so many brand changes around here. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, also Jericho invents a new match and he smashes up somebody's property. I wasn't really paying attention because I was so. He he, an- he announces what they're calling the Stadium Stampede match for Double or Nothing. Um, the Elite challenge the uh, uh, sorry the Inner Circle challenge the Elite. So that's Kenny, Matt, Nick, Adam, and Matt. No Cody, because obviously he's got a match of double or nothing already. Mm. Um, and it basically will be them in the middle of the 80,000-seater Jacksonville Jaguar Stadium. And they will do absolutely whatever they like to each other. Vanguard 1 comes down to agree on behalf. Yep. They take his T-shirt back off him, and then he beats him up with a bat. Yeah. Um, Offenseless drone. Yeah, like, number one, thank you for no-selling my joke. Uh, well, I was just like, I'm feeling distraught about that you're welcome. Yeah, and um, <laughs> but Victor, Vic, let me, let me move it to Victoria because we talked a lot. Victoria, um, the elite have accepted. Uh, thank God. Hello. One, yeah, yeah, the elite have accepted. Um, who, which five people will the elite pick to fight the inner circle? Let's put this over to Victoria. The elite currently has six members. They will need five members for this match. Which five do they go with, or who do they leave out? Oh, um, I'm not sure. Uh, well, we haven't seen much of of, Fade. um, and I think considering everything that we've seen go on there with him, um, maybe that's where they go. Yeah, well, and just further that storyline. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's uh, that's a good place to be. Well, how about you, George? I mean, the the team is already up on the internet. Oh, is it? Uh, oh, well, like, yeah, I know. Is it the same blood? No, this is the thing. This is the same blood and guts team. It's but... not Cody. It's not Cody. It's, oh, Matt, it's, it's, Matt, it's Matt, Nick, Kenny, oh. Adam, and then Matt Holiday. Oh, I see. Interesting. All right, then. Fair enough. Uh, thank you for doing your due diligence because, you know, I you think, yeah, it's fine. I thought you were no, I thought you were no selling my journalism then. Uh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I would never, all right? There's a reason why I yes. built, there's a reason why I built my co-host this more knowledgeable than me. Because I just, yeah, true. yeah, because I'm just here to say one-liners. Speaking of one-liners, uh, let's move on to other news. Uh, Cody, at right at the beginning of the show, said, disrespect your surroundings. <laughs> And then, like, it's like the start of a heavy metal song. It is the start of a metal, heavy metal song, George. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's not like the start of a heavy metal song. But, like, yeah, Good like, he's just like, he's just in, in the most MAGA truck ever with the MAGA symbol on it and the MAGA, same MAGA symbol on his neck, and he just knocks over a single barricade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? It's just, uh, like, this was, this was. Ill advised. <laughs> what do you guys think? Interesting. Cody has a very interesting way of doing uh, promo sometimes, isn't it? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's just like, yeah, it's just, uh, no, what, like, Victoria, what do you think? Do you think it was, do you think this came off the right way? Um, I, I, the whole opening gave me like a, a weird feeling. Uh, I was quite uncomfortable at the beginning, and everything that was said, I don't know, it, it had the right effects. Like, I was watching it. This is kind of pissing me off, and I liked that. Um, and then Cody came in, and I just wasn't quite sure. His, his uh, appearance is like a B Tech version of John Cena at WrestleMania 23, combining with Stone Cold from the entire Astute era. Yeah, and it was just like a bit of shit. <laughs> I can't like it. He's also dyed his hair blonde again when he kept saying he's not going to, he said he's going to leave it brown. But he's well, dying his hair blonde. Well, I think that's more in tribute to his dad, you know? Well, I think it also makes him look like a super villain. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Um, I actually think brown haired Cody is actually a signal for um, he's going to do some bad shit, actually. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, we, we have a couple of other things to talk about. The women's fatal four way spins off into two matches of double or nothing. I am in shock. I am in shock that they care about their women's um, division to the extent where they're going to book two matches at double or nothing. Let's talk. I'm about- glad to see their women's division is back because they haven't had a women's match for like a month with the pandemic going on like yeah. it's been very little it's been like Brit Baker but that's it there's been no one else yeah yeah 
one hundred percent. Obviously, the fatal four way ends with Karashida pinning Penelope Ford, putting a which basically puts her at the back of the line. Um, Britt Baker and uh, I forgot a blanked on her name. Chris Statlander, there you go. Chris Statlander aren't involved in the decision because Britt Baker decides to try and break her jaw on the outside. (laughs) (laughs) Which you just love to see. Um, Also, she managed to get a latex glove out, which is genius, you know? She does it all the time. I know she does it all the time. It's just genius in these times. She steals it from the referee, which is even more healing. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) <laughs> um, but yeah so those two are our match Chris Statlander versus Britt Baker that is the first um, well not the, yeah that is the first women's match um, the second women's match is a slight tweak we um, Hikari Shida um, secures her position as number one contender and um, <laughs> I love this because she loved it Nyla Rose returned the kendo stick to Hikari Shida's Shida right to her face it's just like the um, shitty grin she gave the camera afterwards it's like have you kept the stick back ha <laughs> and then she walked off <laughs> <laughs> so anyway now that match is no DQ which um, is fine I guess you hello have you missed hello have you missed anything else out in the show um yeah in your nose yeah one more thing uh, Darby Allen apparently is an amateur wrestler but he's still sulking very true um, and there's two big two big news things coming out of uh, last night's show Joe go on we've had a fourth member of the casino ladder, ladder match announced oh is it Cole Cabana no it's Ray Phoenix oh yeah no I mentioned that like I was, I was like well not for no reason he's in the ladder match <laughs> So I, didn't, I didn't hear you. And the bigger news, <laughs> yeah, who's on. presenting the TNT Championship for Double or Nothing? Oh, yeah. Um, Mike Tyson. Another WWE Hall of Fame, Renee W. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know what? Like, let's just move on. TWM Podcasts have joined forces with WrestleCrate, the original and best monthly theme, monthly wrestling subscription service to bring you a fantastic deal. If you use the code TWM Wrestling when you sign up to a monthly subscription at WrestleCrate.co.uk, you will receive a free item in your first month's box. Then, if you stay for another month, you'll get a second free item. And then, if you stay for a third month, you guessed it, we'll give you a third free item. It's as easy as one, two, three. WrestleCrate brings you the best swag from the biggest companies and names in the wrestling world. We're talking t-shirts, photos, pins, DVDs, vinyl figures, and loads more from WWE, Progress, Shakara, NXT, Fight Club Pro, and loads more. That's WrestleCrate.co.uk and use the code TWM Wrestling for up to free, free items, all thanks to WrestleCrate and TWM. We did forget one bit of NXT news, which I'll allow George to say because he has been the guy who has been doing his due diligence. George. Last night, we got, well, it's actually on the bump. We got told that DX will be on NXT with a big announcement. And it's the Triple H is, no, he's not pregnant. That's a, poor, that's a poorly tasted joke. Uh, we're getting an NXT takeover in your house pay-per-view on the, uh, on the 7th of June, I should say, as it is celebrating 25 years since the first In Your House pay-per-view. Obviously, DX had their own In Your House, which is the reason why that they were the ones they allowed to announce it, which is pretty cool um, to see. And it is mental to think we're getting another In Your House after all of these years. After all of these years, indeed. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, with that announcement, I believe that is NXT versus AEW. So the only question to ask is, what, what, did, what did everyone prefer? Um, we'll start with. Hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah, we'll start with the youngest, Victoria. Uh, I preferred NXT this week. Um, yeah, I preferred NXT. Yeah. Enjoyed more of the matches. Yeah, I, I was enjoying this a lot. Yeah. A much better show than last week. Yeah, and George? Uh, I'm going to pick NXT as well uh, because I really enjoyed the storyline of Thatcher and Riddle. So I think that carried it for a lot of it. Yes, and it really did. Imperium, Imperium winning the titles mm-hmm. incredible to see um, Panini 
Uh, Cameron Grimes getting a big win over in a, over Finn Balor. Amazing scene. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Good stuff all round. Leo getting dunked on. Um, <laughs> and, and Johnny Gargano being his egotistical self. Love that. Right. Um, I was all prepared to say, forget everything. Sugar Dunkton had a great showing on AEW. But, um, nah. nah. I mean, like, both of these shows were filler episodes, but I think NXT shaded it because I always say that a wrestling show is better when it's actually about one thing. And NXT nailed that this week. No, no, when it's a when it's got one story thread running all the way through. Uh, There's a there was a beginning, there was a middle, and there was an end. Agreed. Right. Um, I I can give examples from more modern wrestling shows because this um this modern era is when I've been watching wrestling critically, but uh yeah, I'll I think I'll, I'll leave it there. I think it's a clean sweep. It's a clean sweep for NXT. Um, I'm sure one week we'll just all disagree, but uh, that doesn't really matter because I believe right, that happens a lot yeah it's true <laughs> um, well we're going to have to send in winners because there are three of us now George don't you just love to see it don't you I do love to see it I love a triple threat yeah exactly exactly um, yeah your ideal triple threat is with Dexter Loomis and we'll figure it out um, <laughs> I've talked I've talked plenty about Victoria's ideal triple threat and the old rule talk which you can go and check out um, this has been Wednesday Night War this is part of the TW TWM Network. Um, you can go and check us out on TWM.news. You can go and listen to us on various podcast forms and whatnot, Podbean, Spotify, YouTube. Those are the three big ones that I always mem- um, memorize. Um, Victoria, social media, please. Um, my Twitter is at Tazanki Victoria. At Tazanki Victoria, because the running joke of Victoria's internet cutting out, as she says, her um, Twitter account oh. never, ever ends. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. It's actually a running thing. That's Victoria. Have you ever wondered why I always say your Twitter account after you say it? It's because you've cut out on my audio. (laughs) This is the first time I'm telling you this. No, no, you don't. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Um, (laughs) This has been happening for months. (laughs) I am prepared. (laughs) George, what is your social media? George underscore Jill underscore. And um, I, I, uh, it's, it's not been a great week. I'm not giving mine out. See you guys next time.